Hello, my name is Propium and today we're going to talk about the G-Tech i3 Pro. Uh, I bought this uh, 3D printer uh, one year ago, about one year ago, and it's uh, due for a review. So, uh, this 3D, 3D printer, or 3D printer, I mean, <laughs> uh, um, Costs uh, well, it did cost 300 bucks. Uh, well, USD or US dollars when I bought it the first time, uh, but now it costs uh, 258 USD uh, on the GTX uh, <laughs> GTX home site, which is gtech.com with all those E's. So, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty cheap uh, printer, uh, which I guess a lot of guys could actually afford. Uh, unlike the Ultimaker 2 or 2 Plus or what it's called, uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty expensive, uh, the Ultimaker, but I guess it's a good printer, I don't really know. Because I don't have one. Anyway, we're here to talk about the GTEC i3 Pro. Uh, and for what it is, it's a really good printer. It's uh, uh, printing out. Uh, I use this, uh, I use it a lot. Um, the pros, of course, are it's pretty cheap, uh, especially for what it is. So um, it's based on the what is it called? The open source system uh, Persa i3, I guess. Um, uh, print size is 200 by 200 uh, by 180 I think I thought it was 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters but uh, when I was printing actually it's 175 millimeters uh, height uh, because I was printing with it I thought uh, the height was 200 so I had uh, in Cura which I use as my personal slicer or well my favorite, personally favorite slicer, uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it was 200, so I had 200, 200, 200, so I was printing as large as I could, I just maximized the scale in Cura, and <laughs> it still printed at 175 millimeters, but, uh, well, yeah, it stood still and printed in the top, so it was laying li layer on layer on layer, on the same exact layer or spot or height or whatever so uh, that was my bad I guess uh, anyway uh, the print quality is pretty decent um, and I would advise you to go with a if, if you're watching this video you're probably new to 3d printing and you want to buy a pretty cheap entry-level printer and I guess this is a good entry-level printer uh, I suggest you to um, look out uh, well look up the Vahu Vahu <laughs> i3 printer uh, I heard a lot of good stuff about that printer but um, still I think this is a good candidate um, it's pretty easy to use it's a uh, LSD screen here <laughs> LCD <laughs> LSD <laughs> I'm not going to cut that out <laughs> Anyway, uh, it also has support for uh, uh, SDHC apparently uh, memory cards This is the 16 gigabyte one um, I don't know if there's any maximum size you can use but it doesn't really matter. Um, it also uh, everything is complete. Uh, you have to build it yourself. So if, if you're not comfortable with uh, building stuff like uh, this, you have to know a little bit of wiring. It's I mean it's pretty simple. It's explained, uh, but um, still, for some people it might be very frustrating. Uh, to build this printer. I used uh, two days myself to build this printer, which 
doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, I used a lot of time during those two days because I had... It... What? Did you hear that? I have to just check. Uh, I still, uh, this is this computer is not uh, well. So anyway, uh, yeah, I used a lot of time to build it um, in hours. I think maybe 16 hours. So I spent about eight hours each day. Um, I don't really remember. It might have been a bit less actually, but also this have uh, this. Um, the power unit or PSU um, supports both 110 volts and 220 volts or 230 and that's in Norway it's 230 I'm pretty sure but 220 is, ha hasn't been an issue for me so uh, but you have to uh, there's a switch inside the PSU which you can uh, change uh, between 110 volts and 220 um, so but, but it was pre-switched for, for me in the instruction. It said it was um, st standard 110 and you had to switch yourself. And I was about to pull pull it all apart, but uh, I watched through the, there's a, like, uh, it's a, a bunch of small holes in it. So I could actually see that it all was already put on 220. So that was not an issue and I appreciate that. I probably do it because people don't read the instructions really well um however the instructions that i got for this printer when i bought it was horrible it was uh, uh it was in really wrong order so sometimes i put things together according to the uh, build guide and uh, when i was about to put more together uh, it turned out that uh, that uh, i had to remove some parts again in order to make that connection um, but they have been updating this um, instruction uh, and also they have videos now on their YouTube page which you can uh, watch um, which it goes into the build uh, it's a build guide in detail the video or at least but uh, it's parted up in really small parts so you have to <laughs> switch a lot um, I also had some issues um, regarding this uh, thread, uh, threaded rod. It's a bit, it's not completely straight, uh, which have uh, I, I can see that it's um, s somehow well a little bit um, of the build uh, print quality is uh, decreased because of this. Uh, i uh, seen a lot of guys having the same issues with other type of uh, printers as well and what they have done is but they have bought new rods um, which ain't just a threaded rod it's like um, for CNC stuff um, which I'm thinking I will do and if you choose to buy this printer I would uh, recommend you buy a bigger nozzle than I did. I sh uh, chose the smallest one because I, I was more uh, uh, into the print quality than the speed. And I thought 0 0.3, well, great. But it turns out um, I had a lot of issues with it. It took a lot of time. Um, and although uh, 0 0.5, which I'm using right now, uh, decreases the print quality a little bit, I still don't think it's a lot, and uh, and um, it looks uh, pretty amazing. It takes a lot of less time. It's it's fantastic, and yeah. Um, so would I recommend this printer? Yeah, I would recommend this printer. I think it's pretty great. I think it's uh, a lot of uh, it's a lot of three uh, <laughs> D printer for your money. Uh, Anyway, I would still recommend you do a little bit of research as uh, more high-end printers become cheaper at some time. Uh, so you might get a better printer for your money, but I would still wouldn't uh, discard this printer. It's a pretty nice printer. Um, well, I wish, but the build structure is a bit, um, I, th I think it's a bit bad to make an enclosure uh, the f fan was 
actually defined hair at the oh, extruder was a bit off the balancing uh, or <laughs> balance of uh, the fan was a bit off so it makes a bit of noise and also um, on my extruder I had a wire that snapped uh, it, I think it's my fault but it's I think but it might have been a bit damaged during shipping as well because it happened shortly after I started printing um, um, also one thing this is something GTEC have to uh, take responsibility for uh, the holder for a for an extruder uh, even though everything was right and the fan was working and everything um, the holder or mount for a uh, extruder is still bended uh, uh, because of heat uh, you could put it in hot water and uh, and bend it up up again so it's not a huge issue you can print out a spare part and uh, mount a new one uh, so it's not a big deal but still I wish uh, that, that was something they had done a bit better so you don't have to think about it also these are starting to crack, so I need to print out new ones. Um, it's the guides for a, for a, well, it's guided by the smooth rods, and it's also the thing that holds the extruder in place, of course. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of prints now. Okay, so now uh, I'm back. Uh, this is oh, actually I have to get closer. Uh, Anyway, first I can just hold it and talk a little bit about it. This is a pudding. <laughs> so yeah, um, he's pretty large. You can probably see. Uh, I could print larger, but uh, that's a decent size. It took about uh, two or three hours, I think. And it's completely hollow. And it's printed with a 0.5 nozzle. Uh, this is a spare part for the extruder. So... It goes here. Uh, I haven't changed it yet. Uh, I also have a couple of others. I printed uh, out just in case. Uh, and this is, uh, you probably won't see it very well, but this is um, this is um, a holder for or organizer for your earbuds, which doesn't work on uh, flat wired earbuds, but still, there's not a a lot of those but I happen to have a pair of those because my daily driver earbuds broke down on me so this is useless for me right now but I st still would use it so wait a, wait a little bit and okay so this is the pudding and uh, the lighting is bad a pair, but uh, I didn't think that through. Anyway, uh, it's pretty great detail details on this guy. On. Even though it's a bigger nozzle, so I wouldn't recommend you go for the zero point. Oh, you probably won't see this because I wear black. So uh, anyway. I have another video. I have a video where I designed this, so you can check it out if you want to. Uh, yeah. So that's my. This is my. But this is the conclusion. But I recommend it for you for a novice uh, or something that someone that's just starting with 3D printing. Of course, I would recommend it. But I also recommend that you have basic knowledge about uh, building stuff <laughs> it's I mean if you have struggled building uh, something with Lego I recommend you don't buy this but uh, a little bit of knowledge and I think you will come a long way you will probably be happy uh, with your person oh also I should probably talk a bit of the company as well a little bit GT company is a Chinese company. Uh, Woohoo! Surprise. Anyway, <laughs> um, one of the reasons why I chose sh chose to buy one of their printers was because uh, uh, it seemed to me like a company that uh, 
uh, was really good at uh, answering their customers or helping them uh, with support and uh, stuff like that. But however, I I did find it a bit hard to to get in contact with them. I tried several of times. Uh, they answered me right away on their Facebook page, but I wasn't pretty happy with their answer. And also, I'm going to show you a couple of clips if I can find them. They're pretty old, and this is horrible quality on it. Uh, about something I had issues with. This rod, for instance, uh, when I first built this printer, it was making a horrible noise. Um, uh, and of course, the cable I was talking about uh, made sparks when it broke. I haven't properly fixed it. I just did some, uh, what is it called again? Uh, makeshift. Yeah, I makeshifted so it worked. And I also had another issue. Yeah, the screen sometimes get scribbled like random text or I don't know but it doesn't seem to affect printing it, it, it's just that you can't read what a uh, LCD screen says and not LSD screen <laughs> I still can't come oh, Jesus Christ uh, anyway um, thank you for watching uh, this video I hope you like my review about the GTIC i3 printer um, and of course, I, if, if you have a lot of money, I would just say buy your Ultimaker uh, or <laughs> some expensive high quality printer. Um, maybe the new HP that comes later. Um, but um, for most people, or especially if you're a student like me, you can just dream about those printers uh, for a long time. And uh, um, so, yeah. That's it. Now I'm finished. I'm sorry I dragged this out so long. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye. Yeah.